this is a golden retriever skull. Oh. So yeah, it's really it's cool. Real. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Vivian. I'm a taxidermist. And today I'll be explaining what my job does to a child, a Gen Z and a senior. So let's go. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Tara. I'm six years old and my school is Tampanese Primary. Nice. So what is your job? I am a taxidermist. Do you know what it is? <laughs> you like make dead animals look real again. Ah, nice. Have you been to the museum? Yes. Yeah, so that is where you will find a lot of these animals. Why is your job called a taxidermist? So um, taxidermy comes from a Latin word. Taxi being moved, dermy is the skin. So what I do is actually I move the skin of the animal that I preserve. So just like the little duck that you see over here. Oh, yeah. it's so, so cute. Yeah. So it I have moved the skin real. to preserve the animal as it is. So that is why the name Taxi Dermy. What do you like most about your job? I can process different animals. So all the animals, they have very interesting story with them. And I love to hear um, all about all those experiences. What is the biggest pet you have taxidermy? So the biggest pet that I have done is a horse. It's perhaps like uh, four or five times my size. It's huge. It must have been hard to process it. Yes, it takes a lot of time. <laughs> is it hard to work with dead animals? No, it's not hard once you are used to it. So before you become a taxidermist, you will need to um, undergo a lot of studies on what to do. And I think with all of this process, just like how you're in school now, it makes things a lot easier. Were you scared the first time you processed the animal? No, I'm not scared. I actually quite like doing it because I love anatomy. How do you make the animals look so real? So I would say it is uh, true practice. The more you do it, uh, the better you get at it. Can I become a taxidermist when I grow up? Yes, definitely. So you will have to go through a lot of studies and perhaps art classes. So what do you usually do in your art classes? Normally in art classes, I do a lot of colour matching. So we study a lot of colours, how to mix and match colours. I find that it's very important in my line of work because you need to match it through the skin tone or even the furs and feathers of the animals. Have you ever done any of the insects? We do all sorts of insects um, ranging from ants, um, ladybugs as well. So they have to be uh, specially kept um, after everything is processed because they are really, really fragile. You can imagine their wings are like tissue paper. They are really, really soft, fragile, so you need to treat it with a lot of care. Thank you for answering my questions. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Thank you, you're welcome. Hello, hi, hi. very nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, I'm Vivian. Wilfred, Wilfred, very nice to meet you. Yeah, hi. So Vivian, I've heard that you're a taxidermist and I see a couple of knickknacks here on the table and why not uh, you explain to us what is your job? Okay, so um, taxidermy is a branch of science where we actually preserve um, animals mainly for education purposes but um, in Singapore what we do here is we open our service to the public so people can preserve their pets as well or even just anything that they want to. Are these real? Or? Yes, okay. everything that you see here is real. So over here we have a budgie. It is really lifelike okay. and you can feel that it is really, really light. So what happens is uh, we only use the skin for taxidermy and all of the internal organs, it will be removed. What about this skull thing? Yeah. This is a golden retriever skull. Oh, so yeah, it's really it's cool. Real. Mm -hmm. So these animals that you have taxidermied, mm -hmm. do they die by natural causes or could they have like had an accident? Do you guys like patch that up as well? It doesn't matter how um, they are because uh, taxidermy is sort of like plastic surgery. So if let's say I have a pet animal who have cancer, I can actually cut that part out and stitch the skin together. So it will look whole. That is what we are trying to give the owner back, which is a very good memory that they can preserve as how they are before the illness. Because it's nice like seeing what they used to look like. Yes. So uh, what is the most interesting animal that you have personally taxidermied? A chihuahua, uh, because the chihuahua actually have cancer, so half of his face was a bit disfigured. And so for me, it was a very memorable and dear piece because when the owner um, got the pet back, she was really emotional. Wow. So 
What are your working hours like? I still keep my day job in the vet. Taxidermy is mostly my side business. Oh. I do work on it um, when I'm free around like two to three days a week. What? made you go into taxidermy and is it difficult to, to be one? Um, I graduated in zoology and I further my studies in skin studies so I specialize in skin preservation. It is a combination between um, knowing a lot of science and art as well because you need to know the science when you are dealing with the animal, the art part when you are actually sculpting the face and the body. So um, I guess um, it is actually quite difficult. Everything comes good with a lot of practice. So I have around like 10 years of practice with this. How do you taxidermy a moth? Must you like dry it out? So for um, insect, we wouldn't call this taxidermy. We call it dry preservation. Dry preservation. So uh, we do clean it. After that, we chemically wash it, chemically process it and after that we pin the wings to make sure that uh, it stays here. So what are some misconceptions that people have about taxidermists? One of the biggest misconceptions about what I do is when I dissect a body, people think that all the blood will just come spurting out, you know, like 5 meters, 2 meters, but it's definitely not true because once the heart stops pumping, your blood is not actually flowing anymore. So there is no bloody steam. Right, yeah. okay. Is it possible to actually stuff a human being? Uh, so we actually do have human preservation, like mummification, but definitely not in Singapore. Would you say it's kind of similar to embalming a, a, a body. It's very different. It's so, different. Okay. Yeah, embalming mainly you use injection, but taxidermy, we do way, way more than that. Not just injection, we sculpt the entire form. Mm. Thank you very much, Vivian, for sharing. And I think it's a very admirable one. Thank you. Hi, Vivian. Hi. I'm Anne. Yeah, hi. Okay. So what does your family think about your career choice? Such an unusual career choice? At first, they are very intrigued by what I do because a lot of people think that I'm just like playing with dead animals. But actually what I'm doing is I'm helping uh, institutions, research places to preserve all of these animals so they can further studies on them. Do you enjoy your job? Yes, I do enjoy my job a lot. Um, especially when I'm dealing with um, all of these uh, dead animals, I feel like I give closure to the pet owners. How long does it take for you to do a bird? So normally a bird like this, it will take me roughly around like two to three hours actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is if I'm quick and also it depends on the skin uh, condition. If the skin condition is not so good, then uh, it will definitely take longer. So you have a wire skeleton? Like? A wire form actually. I mean like a support? Yeah, like, like a support structure. In So uh, olden day taxidermy, they do put back the original bone inside. Mm. But uh, modern day taxidermy, we wanted the specimen to be as light as possible. Possible. How do you take out the skin? You use a blade or something and you take it out? Mm, yes, so we use a surgical knife to actually uh, very oh. carefully remove the skin. Oh, it's very tedious. Huh? Mm, yes. <laughs> How has the art and practice of taxidermy evolved over the years? So taxidermy was a branch of science in the beginning uh, so the people can categorize them, they know what animals is what. And after that, it became a luxury item where people actually hunt um, all of these items, they display it at home uh, as power yes, yes, to, to show people. Mm -hmm. And now it has been more of um, education as well as art. Is a taxidermy taught in Singapore? Mm, no, taxidermy is not taught here. But then uh, they do have other kind of preservation, like perhaps just in sex but at uh, my studio we do teach all the different kinds any unusual or unique requests mm -hmm. so i would say the most unique request i have is we have a call from a private lab where the human is actually still alive but then uh, unfortunately he needed to amputate his arm so he wanted to preserve his arm in other countries perhaps you can do it but uh, not in singapore oh i see thank you for answering all my questions Vivian. it's really been very enlightening thank, thank you, you. I think all of them have very different perspective and view but I'm very happy because everything is quite positive. What the public can actually do for us taxidermists is actually um, to ignore the taboo and to look at us with a new light and perspective. You can definitely come visit us and see what we do. I hope that you have learned a lot more about what I do as a taxidermist. Bye! The biggest misconception is definitely that we are involved with witchcraft or magic. <laughs> yeah.